right, welcome to day two of watercolors. Um, I'll teach you a little bit about how to control your paint today and um, how to mix colors as well. Um, so I've got my little station kind of set up. I'm going to lift the camera a little bit. As you can see, I've got my worksheet that I'm going to work on. I've got newspaper underneath it to keep my desk nice and clean. And then I've got all the stuff I need on the right side to paint with. So I've got my water and my paint and my paper towel. Um, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to keep my stuff on the right side. Um, I'm not going to keep my water on the left side over here because I'm afraid that if I dip into my water, I might drip. Um, as I go over to my paint. So I want to keep everything as controlled as possible. And that's really the name of the game here is control. Um, because watercolors are kind of temperamental and um, they are so watery and sometimes they get a little out of hand. They kind of want to do their own thing. So you got to try to control them as best you can. Um, so I'm gonna, we're going to do this worksheet today um, and kind of fill in these different colors. And some of these are like pretty easy to understand like I have my three primary colors here, my secondary colors, and my tertiary colors, red violet, red orange, those colors with two names on them. Um, I'm going to fill those colors and I'm going to mix those colors and fill them in there as well as on here in my color wheel. And when I make yellow orange over here, don't forget I could just like make a little extra and put it right here. So if you want to save some time, you can do that. Um, but um, back to figuring out how to control the paint. So um, I'm going to fill in, let's see, I think I'm going to fill in my red box, okay? And I kind of want to show you something as to do it. So I'm over here, I've got my paintbrush. I just dipped it in some water. I'm not going to drench my paint like I told you. I just want you to be able to see this, okay? Adding a little water and loosening it up and bringing it to life, okay? And sometimes I kind of like to twist my um, brush into the paint so it gets a lot of paint on the brush. All right, and then um, I'm going to actually try to stain the lines as much as possible. Um, I actually want to treat this like a coloring book, and I want to show that I can control this paint in these brushes as best I can. So I want you guys to be super careful about this. And I kind of like to mark the outsides and then fill in the rest, okay? Okay, and what starts to happen, I don't know if you could see this, I think you can, because I can see it. Okay, is when I'm applying the paint, sometimes with the watercolors what happens is I get this little pool of um, paint, and what will happen is this will dry, and then this will be a darker red, or like more vibrant red, and this will be kind of like a foggy red. And you can actually kind of see in this one too, um, there's like this little space of the square that didn't get as much paint as the rest of it. So when that happens, we can control that. We can kind of go back in with our brush and smooth things out again so that we don't have like a little puddle. Okay? And it'll kind of even out as you're going. And um, it'll start to dry. Okay? Sometimes I can even pull a little bit of off too. Kind of like scoop some of it off if I had a little bit too much paint. So that way it gets nice and even. So you can try doing that. Okay? Um, that's one thing to think about. Um, now let me show you how to mix paint, okay? So, I talked about making yellow-orange before. Um, guess which two colors I need to make yellow-orange. Yeah, yellow and orange. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two different ways of going about this, okay? So I'm going to mix my paint over here because that's what it's for. I don't want to mix within these cups and contaminate. Remember the whole peanut butter jelly situation. Don't contaminate your peanut butter your jelly. Don't contaminate your paint. So um, I could start making yellow orange by starting with the orange if I feel like it. Okay, I'm putting some orange right here. Okay, um, I'm going to, now I want some yellow now. So I'm going to wash out my brush. Okay, I'm going to check it on my paper towel. I know you can't see this on camera, but I'm checking it. And yeah, there's no orange left on the brush. So I can dip into the water, pick up some yellow. Okay. And add it to the orange. Okay. Now, did that change a lot? Not really. So let's try the other way around. Let's try with starting with yellow. Okay. I'm going to pick up some yellow.
right? And this time I'll add a little bit of orange, just a little bit, to the yellow and see how quickly it changes, okay? Um, so, the big lesson to learn here is that when you're going to mix two colors, start with the lighter color first and then add a little bit of the darker color to it. So in this case, when I started with orange and I tried to add a little bit of yellow to it, yellow is really light and it's therefore very, very weak. So it really had a hard time trying to affect the orange and make it go from orange to yellow orange. When I did the other way around, when I started with yellow here, and I added just a touch of orange to it, it was able to change that yellow very quickly to a more yellowy orange. Um, so you always want to start with the lighter color first because it's a little bit more weaker, it's easier to change, it's easier to control. The darker colors are harder to control um, if you want to try and lighten them up. So always, always, always start with the lighter color first. Okay? So then I can come in and take some of this. And I already did my yellow orange up here, so I'll do it over here. And I like to line it first. Like kind of like outline it. Okay. Got a little bit of a pool going on right there, so I want to try and even that out a little. Just try to make it as smooth as possible. I'm kind of like dabbing off my brushes as I go a little bit. Okay. Um, now let me take opportunity to just explain the rest of the worksheet. So, um, complementary colors tells you what they are right there. Opposites, opposite colors. So if I have green, opposite color is red. If I have blue, the opposite color is orange. I just want you to see a couple pairs of complementary colors. So whatever complementary colors you want to like fill in here, like red and green, or blue and orange, or yellow and purple, or yellow green and red violet, whatever they are, um, you can do two sets of complementary colors. Just paint them in there. Then we have analogous colors, which are colors that are side by side. Um, they sit right next to each other on the color wheel. Now, let me show you a mistake that um, students make. Um, they want to do analogous colors, and they go, okay, red, orange, and yellow. And they put it in like red, orange, and yellow. Well, those aren't exactly side by side. It would be better to do red, red, orange, and orange. Or orange, yellow, orange, and yellow. They should be sitting right next to each other. So show me three sets of analogous colors, colors that sit right next to each other side by side. All right. 